Hello, welcome to Board Deck and Dice. Today I'm looking at the little sibling of Captain Sonar, and that is Merely Sonar. Let's go, go take a brief overview of the game mechanics, and then I will tell you why you should buy it or not. Sonar is a game with a mass off screen. Sitting either side of that screen are teams of one or two players. The captain's role is to direct the ship by choosing the submarine, not a ship, choosing a starting point. Here I go north or up, right or never eat shredded wheat east. Oh, it's down in the bottom right there. And as you see, every time I move as the captain, I'm filling up my energy bar. Energy is used for the special powers above, such as silence, which costs three energy, so I rub them out, and I can make a move without telling out loud the other team where I'm moving. Here's a closer look at the special abilities. You have uh, surface, which you have to reveal where you are, but you can rub out your line because you're not allowed to cross your own line or over islands. Here we see the radio operator. He is tracking the other team by uh, noting down their movements on his acetate. Uh, but obviously remember that a sub cannot go through an island, so the radio operator will be moving this around to see if he can locate the other team accurately. When he does, they can fire a missile if they're in the right quadrant, and the first team to do two damage to the other team wins. So, uh, let me first preface this bit by saying I've not played Captain Sona. I've always wanted to, the eight player mayhem appeals to me, but also the struggle of getting eight people together to play it uh, puts me off. So when Sona came out, I thought, do you know what, I'm gonna take a chance on that. Um, and it works really well. The big thing I was worried about listening to reviews of Captain Sona um, and the fact that you could already play that one turn base was that it would be a bit boring. However, I found it, uh, the turn by turn nature, quite tense and quite exciting, like trying to work out where the other players are, uh, if you've got a teammate particularly, and uh, helping each other, trying to record how much energy the other team's got, getting it wrong and finding out they could fire a torpedo at you after all, all worked really well. If I had one concern, it would be that a couple of times it felt like once we knew where each other was, we could, um, it was just going in a big circle of crossing into the other torpedo firing zones before the other one could get up to four and then maybe someone would risk a silence and it wouldn't work and then they'd get blown up. So that cat and mouse element of the game can drag out a little bit when you're both on one damage and you know you're re you really want the win and you both know where each other is and it's just that race to get four energy to fire the torpedo but maybe you'll try something different but it kind of feels like you know you don't want to put one move wrong because that could give the other team a win so that bit can take a little long but that was the only bit that took long i didn't find in generally that turns took that long um you just have to say a direction then put your energy on if you're doing a standard move or if you're using one of those specials uh, Take, take the required energy off and uh, take that move. Sonar lets you get one of the, the line or the row that they, the other person's on. Uh, silence lets you move stealthily. Surface rubs out your line that you've been drawing behind you, but you have to give away your position. Um, and that the reason you might want to do that is you're not allowed to cross over your line. Uh, so it's really clever. It works really well with two and four players. And whenever I've taken it to the club, it uh, just gets played again and again and again. And it, people enjoy watching this from the point of view where they can see both sides because it looks like an entirely different game. And then they sit down and play it and they get the tension as well. So it's one that's worked really, really well. Uh, so intimidation factor, quite low on this one. You get a map, just make sure you get the same maps as the other team. Oh, I never made that mistake. Um, and one of you's got the captain's map that's got all the powers on and the other's just got the one to move the thing around on. Uh, rule book is short and clear, fun, there's a lot of fun to be had here. The components are good, the game is fun, the only thing that's a little bit disappointing always with these games is the dry white pens, particularly erasers, you're going to want to get some cloths or some paper towels, shove them in the box because uh, as with all these games you're just going to have those little black dots from the uh, dry white pen all over everything and it all looks smudged and dirty within, uh, well within one play really. Uh, Am I going to keep it in my collection? This is one I've, I've got myself. 
Uh, yes, I am going to keep it in my collection. I think it's uh, a bit unique uh, for my collection. It's one that I can explain to new gamers really easily and the turn-based nature makes it non-threatening. Uh, I think it's a great game, great little game. Uh, would I play it again? Obviously it's in my collection and I'll play it again. Would I introduce it to others? Well, that goes without saying because it's going into my collection, yeah. So for me this is a winner. Captain so uh, Sonar is a winner. Uh, a great two to four player, two or four player game, you could do three as well, um, that I think is different, plays reasonably quick as long as you don't get into that cat and mouse phase, and uh, yeah, will uh, be an interesting one for people around the edges to watch as well, and draws a crowd if you're playing it at club. That's Sonar, thanks very much for watching Board Deck and Dice, we will see you next time.